Hello and welcome to the Matthew Thoughts channel. Uh, today we'll be doing a video uh, reacting to a fat rights type thing video. Yes, I made it over multiple months through multiple different microphones with different audio setups and that. So expect a lot of changes in the audio as the video goes on by a long way. It could be a bit distracting but I did want to get this video out there and did not want to have to throw it away as I want you to be able to see it. Anyway, let's go on with the video. So what nonsense do you think the regressive left is now pushing? How about fat acceptance? Yep, because we need to celebrate people filling themselves up on tons of food more than they exercise off. <laughs> yeah, they are absolutely crazy. Anyway, today yeah, we'll be talking about one of these crazy people who think being fat is a good thing. Hi, my name's Kath Reed. I'm a fat activist in Brisbane. I blog at Fat Heifer Lump, um, where I've been blogging for about five years. And it's my goal to change the way people think about fatness. Her weight is not just fat, it's of course obese, as you can see from her physical size. And the risks of being that size are very obvious, as I will explain uh, with the source for the National Health Service Choices part. Risk of obesity, tackling this type of obesity is important in addition to causing obvious physical changes it can lead to a number of serious and potentially life-threatening conditions such as type 2 diabetes so who loves taking having to take loads and loads of pills and also having to have a really restricted diet because that is a good thing apparently coronary heart disease so who loves themselves a nice heart attack to end their life really early on and sometimes the cancers such as breast cancer and bowel cancer just to shorten your life even more and stroke another thing to shorten your life even more and it says obesity can also affect quality of life and lead to psychological problems such as self-esteem and depression of course pretty much being a fat activist is pretty much a psychological problem anyway because you because you literally saying you're supporting a health problem which is of course a problem in itself I always thought I was fat. One of my earliest memories, I was called fat. I've always been called fat. And I believe that the worst thing a person could possibly be was fat. Okay, first thing is that you do not look particularly fat in the photo that you showed at all. And the uh, second thing is, just because it's not the worst thing that you can do, does not mean it's good for you. The thing I can think of that's worse, of course, is smoking, as... According to NHS choices, uh, it takes between 3 years and 10 years of your life out on average compared to smoking which it says at least 10 years of your life. Uh, the smoking one is from the CDC and the obesity one is from the NHS choices. So that it means you should not celebrate something just because it's not the worst thing that you can do. It should not be encouraged still and by encouraging it you're still encouraging something that is dangerous. Instead of uh, moaning about what is the worst thing you can possibly do, you can try and be healthy within your life instead. This will help you live a lot longer and you'll have a lot happier of a life than being a beast. Through my teens and 20s and early 30s, I just battled it in every single way I could. You name the diet, I was on it. Um, you name the uh, weight loss plan, I was on it. I believed that I couldn't do anything in life that was good until I was thin. I couldn't have any form of success, couldn't have a good job, couldn't have um, a, a loving relationship, couldn't be happy in any way. So I didn't try. Yeah, I'm just going to give a bit of advice. Uh, you should always try to aim higher than what you currently are, as if you do not try to aim higher, you're just going to be stuck the way you are. So instead of uh, accepting your weight, why don't you do some walking as Australia is known to be quite a beautiful of a country. You've got plenty of stuff like the Outback and that to do. Instead of going around complaining how fat you are, why don't you just do a bit of exercise? This will help a lot more than those so-called crash diet plans because, uh, because most diets are not that good at all for anyone. It is better just to walk. And it's also more efficient for calorie burning just to walk as well. I haven't always been fat. I was actually 
a regular sized little girl. And when I was 17, I was actually diagnosed with type one diabetes. Since then, taking insulin and treating my diabetes regularly, I slowly became fatter and fatter. Okay, I was doing a bit of research on this. Uh, I was looking at the website Diabetes UK, uh, where someone's actually asking this question. Like they were 13 years old and at 10 years, began to feel very insecure in that because of diabetes. And it says here, I do get a lot of queries whether insulin puts on weight, insulin does not put the weight on. However, if someone's trying to lose weight, it can take longer. Pretty much what this means is that it will not necessarily put weight on but if you're already fat in the first place it could take longer to remove the weight this is not an excuse not to try at all of course and you should always keep on trying or not be fat in the first place maybe when i began to gain weight i was a little worried my mother was a little worried but as time went on i became okay with being fat Fat acceptance is the radical notion that fat people are human beings and deserve respect. First point is that, of course, everyone who lives on this planet, of course, is a human. As people are the species of human, what people more have a problem with, with you, is that you're celebrating a health condition rather than trying to do something about it you just say oh everyone should feel sorry for you maybe instead of uh moaning to people maybe do something a fucking about your health condition rather than moaning to fucking everyone god this type of movement just makes my blood boil so much anyway let's just get on to the next piece of video i discovered fat acceptance probably about six years ago I think it was on Twitter that I just somebody must have retweeted an article um, and it, as per anything on the internet you read one and the vortex gets you and you read the next thing and the, the next thing it was kind of like a light bulb went on and I that, that was when I started to think that perhaps it could apply to me so according to this woman the best advice comes from Twitter why would you think the best advice would ever come from twitter what at all are you even talking about your best place to find advice on health and that would be looking at an official website run by an official organization rather than looking at some social networking website what you're doing just sounds self-destructive completely maybe instead of just accepting your health condition maybe do something about it and stop costing your health system loads of money to try and treat your condition for you because you are too fucking lazy. Anyway, next piece of clip coming up. There seems to be a cultural obsession here, whether you're in Australia or the United States, with a thin body. Health at Every Size is a movement that is basically just encouraging people to adopt good health behaviors and to forget about weight as a goal, or weight change as a goal, and instead just embrace the bodies that we're living in and make good health choices to support them. I already explained the statistics earlier on in this video. It is not healthy to be fat at all. And in fact, you're just encouraging a problem. Just like irresponsible authors like you. You only seem to be doing this to, uh, for the book sales. That is the likely reason why someone would be supporting fatness. Is if they had financial incentive. Which of course you do with your book sales. Anyway, let's go on with the next part of the video. I'm Sarah Harry and I specialise in body image and I also teach curvy yoga. Fantastic. When I tell people that I'm a yoga teacher, I usually get an interesting reaction. <laughs> Sometimes people think that I'm joking, uh, which is funny and a bit awkward because I think they expect a yoga teacher to be uh, a certain way, very small and lithe and flexible. And I'm very flexible, but I'm not small or lithe. Well, with all that fat you have, yeah, there's no way you're going to be absolutely flexible whatsoever, to be honest with you, as you're not going to be able to bend over from that fat. God's sake, these people are ridiculous. The problem with aligning exercise and weight loss is that then we put a whole lot of pressure on the only benefit for exercise is a way to lose weight, whereas the benefits of exercise are so enormous. So I think we're doing exercise a great disservice in only making it about weight loss. Looks great. <laughs>
The main advantage for exercise is weight loss, of course. And of course, it can improve your joints as long as you're not already fat. And that, whether well, of course, if you are already fat, then it can actually harm your joints more if you do too harsh exercise while doing it. Basically, making it harder and harder for you to do more and more things. Pretty much being fat causes tons of problems, but of course you are not one to admit to it as it would be admitting to issues that you have yourself. This pride movement will not help anyone who actually wants to lose weight. All it will do is tell them that their issues are perfectly normal and that their weight is perfectly normal. And yes, the main point of exercise is to lose weight. And that, of course, is the main advantage of exercise. But, of course, yoga would not be very efficient like that. And, of course, building up muscles like that is not a vague idea if you're already extremely fat. There are many reasons for why someone might be living in a fat body. For some people, that's just genetics. And they're leading very healthy lifestyles, eating good quantities that are appropriate to nourish their bodies. And to try to judge somebody by their weight will give you a lot of misinformation. As already explained in this video, of course judging someone's health based on weight is a very good idea as that tells a lot about the person's body as fat causes a lot of issues and is almost as bad as smoking as I mentioned earlier on in this video and of course the evidence for that is earlier in this video because of course I recorded this over like four months. So yep, of course, just look earlier in this video for the evidence. One of the main things that I uh, find is that I'm under constant surveillance. You can't go anywhere without being watched by people. That happened before I dyed my hair pink. <laughs> Anyone who is different from normal will be judged by people based on those differences from normal. As not everyone is fat, that would make you think that more people are going to notice that you are the one who's fat, meaning that you're the one who's going to be noticed first in the street. This should not come as a surprise to you, as you should already know that not everyone is fat. <sighs> it happened before I chose to wear bright colours. I used to be what I referred to as a brown sparrow. I would wear dark colours, not wear anything that was visible. It was before I had tattoos and people would kind of, even then, still sort of make a comment about the fatty, you know. Yes, as I said before, of course people are going to notice that you are fat. This is the one going to be one of the most noticeable things about you for the first time someone sees you in the fucking street. You fucking idiot. People judge me for my weight all the time. I go out in public, people will give my husband and I looks. We take up a lot of space when we walk down the road holding hands on a footpath. I remember when we were trying to jog once, they were cheering us on like we were in a marathon and, and you could tell it was quite sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, you get that from time to time. These people that think they're, you know, having a bit of fun, but realistically it does hurt sometimes. It does yeah. hurt, yeah. It was your choice to be fat. It was no one else's choice for you to be fat. It was no one else's choice for you to overeat. We hear in the news all the time about an obesity epidemic and how people are dying of obesity. And what we see is that it's just not true. What is true is that people are heavier than they used to be. But what's also true is that we're living longer than ever before. We're living longer than ever before because of medical advances. There is a lot of evidence to suggest that overeating does in fact reduce your lifespan to the point of about of smoking, as I said already multiple times already in this video. And I've also shown the evidence earlier in this video that in fact overeating does cause tons of fucking problems for you, including lowering your life expectancy. People ask me all the time if um, you can be fat and healthy. I'm not offended by that question. I feel like it reflects on me a little bit uh, because I feel like I am a, a fat and healthy person. Would you say to a smoker, can you be smoking and healthy? Because that's the equivalent of your weight class of obesity is that you're about as bad as a smoker. So no, you cannot be fat and healthy at the same time. It'd be like saying, can you smoke and be healthy at the same time? Besides the same thing, you fucking idiot. I'm not healthy. I'm going to say that because I have two autoimmune diseases. I can't say that I'm fully healthy, but I'm doing the best that I can to live a great life. I've got some advice for you. If you want to be healthy, it's called lose weight. What you do is you go on more runs than that, eat more healthily, basically. Try to replace some of the cars with stuff like broccoli nut. And if you want to try to replace that with stuff like cauliflower. It's some simple tips like that. 
can help you lose weight and improve your life very quickly. I'm not the expert on societal health. I am the expert on living in my body. I'm not a disease and I'm not diseased. This is the body that I come in. If someone offered me a, a way to... No, it was your choice to be fat. That is no one else's choice for you to have been fat whatsoever. To instantly lose my weight guaranteed success tomorrow, I probably still wouldn't accept their offer. We, we shouldn't all be the same. There's nothing wrong with who I am. There's nothing wrong with being a fat person. Just like there's nothing wrong with being a non-fat person. There's a lot of problems with being a fat person. And of course, you also take up unfair resources on your healthcare systems, meaning less resources for people who did not cause themselves issues by overeating. Yes, you had choices to be fat and choices not to be fat. It's not that hard. Switch a few items can reduce a lot of calories with a few simple changes. Fat acceptance led me to a place where I could be who I wanted to be. And so I started to ask myself how I wanted to be. And that was positive and bright and colourful and fun. And it's a really good feeling. <laughs> it is a really good feeling to not hate myself. And of course, it makes you feel good to be eating yourself to an early grave. Yes, of course, that is the type of lunacy we're talking about here. You should try to keep thin as it will make you live a lot longer than if you were fat. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.